Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today, what I've got for you is a bunch of random TIG welding jobs, all done with this little PowerTIG 210 EXT. The first one's a little 3 8 inch bar stock, some kind of little lid that goes on a barrel, and the feet were misplaced and cut off, and the guy got into them real bad with a bandsaw, so I've got to build up those areas that are gouged out with a bandsaw. So I'm doing a little TIG. TIG welding build up here. I lighten up on the corner. I'm letting the cleaning action cook away some of that crud. You see that black soot that's cooking away. Before I ever puddle the corner, I let that cook away. And then I get a nice clean puddle. And I'm running a bead down, a bead down the edge so that I give myself a little bit of a border so that when I dress it off with a grinder, I, it cleans up to a nice sharp edge. The reason I start on the corner is because it takes less heat to puddle the corner and then by the time I weld into the area, the end of the area where the saw got into, I've, get, I've got quite a bit of heat built up and then the rest of it just welds that much better. So by this time I've got a good bit of heat built up and now I can just kind of work my way in board into the thicker section. And I don't have to use a whole lot of amperage to do that. So I'm just about done here, but I see I've got a little low place. So I'm going to light up again and just add a few drops into that low place so that it dresses off nice and flush. And then with about a uh, 80 or 100 grit sanding disc, I'm putting a little wax on it so that the disc doesn't load up. That's a good, good way to grind aluminum or sand aluminum. It really cuts like butter with you, if you have a little beeswax or most any kind of wax, actually. And then I've got to put these little tabs on the end. Again, this is 3 8 bar stock. i got just a slight chamfer on the back side that's against the table right there. But I want to get some tacks on the corners on each end here before I, before I weld it. So after getting a tack on each end, you can see the chamfer there, I need to go ahead and weld those ends and get a little weld buildup. Now this is actually done per a drawing. So there's instructions on types of welds and joint preparation and all that stuff. It's a goofy little job, doesn't make any sense, but I know that if I don't put a little buildup on the edge out here, and all I do is weld that one end, it's going to draw and pull and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be crooked and I'm going to have to redo it. So. I'm putting a little bead on the ends first before I fill up this little chamfer bevel here. You notice I've got a tapered electrode now. I set the AC balance to what is equivalent to 80% electrode negative. And I'm just letting the heat build up a little bit and I'm washing a little metal into that groove before I start adding rod. And then I just wash ahead, add rod, wash ahead, add rod. And by the time I get started good, I'm done pretty much because it's only about an inch wide. So I did four. There's actually two of these parts, four per part, eight of them. And that was all there was to it. Again, I set it to 80% uh, electrode negative, amperage on about 150 amps, and then just worked it with the foot pedal. At times, I needed all 150. Most of the time, I didn't need that much. I use about 120 hertz on the frequency. Another job I've done previously with this machine is this little boat propeller repair using the copper backup to kind of cast the weld metal once I start welding and also trap the argon. This is a pretty common repair for boat props. There's businesses that do nothing but this and it can get kind of complicated needing to have pitch blocks and pitch and rake indicators and balancing equipment and everything, but sometimes you can get by with a very simple little repair if it just got into a rock. You can uh, make a template out of cardboard and get the, get the shape really close to all the other uh, veins and uh, it'll be fine. But doing a little edge weld here, again, once against that copper, it really does a good job on, on kind of trapping the argon so you get good shielding. And then I like to go backwards sometimes. Most of the time, TIG welding, you're pushing the puddle, but when you're doing an edge build up like this, you can see how high I'm, I'm building the bead there. 
it really helps you profile and get a uh, higher crowned weld bead, which is what you want if you're doing a buildup like this. So going forward and back saves a little time and, and uh, it works pretty, pretty well for an edge weld. On this particular job, I would set the AC balance to about 65. A little blending off with a Rolox Scotch-Brite type pad using a template that I marked prior to. Let's me get that one right. And then I did this job not too long ago, a stainless steel, uh, kind of a mismachined part. That groove isn't supposed to be there, so I've got to build it back with weld metal so that it can be machined off again because and it was the last part of a series and there was no more material to make more parts with and so welding it was the way to go. Lots of beads. This would have been a lot quicker with a uh, MIG, but I didn't have MIG stainless wire or Trimix gas or 98.2 gas, so I just TIG welded it all the way and did a little wash blending prior to the machining and then it machined off just fine. This is not final machine, but close to it. And I threw in a little, just messing around with this machine to kind of see its capabilities. This 25 thousandths thick box cutter blades on an outside corner joint. It's clamped to an aluminum angle iron. Just want to see if it's got a good low end. We could weld something thin like this without blowing it away. And it does. I even use a 332nd electrode. Now, 1 16th electrode would definitely be better for something with this low amperage, but sharpening the 332nd up pretty sharp, it, I was able to, to do just fine on that little box cutter blade. And with it clamped to that uh, aluminum angle, it's almost like having an argon purge on the back side. Not quite as good, but almost. And then I tested out the high end of it, messing around. I got some half inch thick 4140, and just to see how it would do. And you can see that's a smooth arc. It does just fine. Plenty of power. It's about 150 amps right here, just using the foot pedal. To, uh, to kind of feather when I get to the ends. So no surprises there. It's capable of doing something thick and something thin. And then I also did this little bearing sleeve inside a roller. I think it was the same day as I did that 4140 actually, but just did a little lap joint there, a little seal pass to hold that bearing sleeve in. And another little job that came through the door was welding these little stainless handles on, on some nuts. I used 309 filler wire, and this one I used high speed pulse. Used about 39 pulses a second, about 33% on time, and 33% uh, background current. Just kind of messing around, focusing the arc, and uh, kind of limiting the heat input a little bit. And back when I was doing some field tests on this machine, I ran bead after bead after bead on an aluminum channel just to kind of see what, you know, what the capabilities were. One of the unique features of the machine is a uh, what's called an advanced pulse where it actually switches between AC and DCEN. See how it kind of sounds like the emergency broadcasting network? I've messed around with that on some thick stuff, build up on some 3 8 inch thick aluminum. Had some pretty good results using that. I did this video some while back, just a regular flat position, 8 inch thick butt joint, but this is the machine I was using. You see I've got a tapered electrode. I've got it set at about 120 hertz, about 70% EN, which on that machine is a negative a setting that reads out as minus 20, but it's equivalent to 70% electrode negative. And that got me some really good penetration, no problem, on that, on that piece without even cleaning it. Well, that's all the random TIG jobs for today. Thanks for watching, and visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.